This is tutorial number 16 while we are building our mail ordering API in Laravel. And the first step in this tutorial, we are going to visit our Jira board and make sure that the mail management and the authentication are all in the done section because those tasks were completed. And we must make sure that the menu manage management of the API tasks are in the, the, are in, the in the progress section because we are going to start building the menu management of the API. So let us go onto our Jira board. I have logged into <coughs> my Atlassian account and this is the Jira board for the mail ordering API. As you are seeing mail management issue was completed in the last tutorial. So let us go ahead and drag it to the done section. And since we are going to start working on the menu management, let us drag this one into the in progress section. So now <clears throat> our Jira board is up to date. Let us go back into our code to see what is next. So first of all, we are going to create a test file inside our test controllers stroke API. As you are seeing, we are going to run this command php at sun make a test http stroke controller stroke api stroke menu controller test so we are going to create a test file called menu controller test inside this path so inside http controllers api we are going to create this file so let us first come back to our project as you are seeing this is the directory http controllers and inside the API folder, we are going to create a new test file called the menu controller test. So let us just get this command and we run it on the terminal such that it creates our test file. So as you are seeing, test created successfully. So let us come back and as you are seeing, a new file called the menu controller test. Um, we made a mistake. Let me first delete this file. I'm going to recreate it. It must be menu controller test. I forgot to include the T at the end. I'm sorry for that. So let us create it again. And as you are seeing, we are having our test file called menu controller test dot PHP. Now, as you are seeing that git is tracking whatever change we make so let us first go ahead and commit to git so we shall say git add with a period to add all the files then we say git commit minus m then we put our commit message so we shall say added menu added menu controller test Add in menu controller test. So committing to git, coming back into our project, the, the, the project tree now is clean. So let us see what is next. We have already created our test file and let us open our test file as you are seeing. This is the new test file menu controller test, which is going to hold all the tests for the menu controller or the menu con the, the menu controller class so now let us see our next step In the next step we are going to implement our test so just get this code this block of code i'm going to explain it so let us just get this block of code and we put it inside our test file. Let's just take this code. And we must close the block. As you are seeing, I never took the closing brace. 
So just go ahead and also implement that closing brace to get rid of the error. So now, as you are seeing, Git is tracking. And what we have done here, we have created a new test inside our test file and we code this test admin can create a meal on a menu. So the administrator will be creating the meals on the menu and as you are seeing we are running the test without applying exception handling such that we can analyze all the errors that may arise. So we are, we are, we are creating a new user using the factory. So we are saying user is equal to app models and we are using the user model and from the user model we are using the factory to create a new user with the email admin at gmail.com and the password 123 admin so after that we are storing the user created by the factory inside a variable called user so since we are using the user model here we must go ahead and add the namespace for the user model as we are going to see and we are making a response and we are saying this acting as user so this user we created so we are applying the the, the middleware onto this endpoint which is http localhost api auth menu so this is the menu endpoint but remember, if we, if we come back into our API routes file, so let us move into API, into resources, API, you are seeing that we do not have any route for the menu. So let us go ahead and implement the route for the menu, and it's going to be an API resource. So let us call it menu. So that is menu and the controller will be called menu controller. So go ahead and add this API resource route for the menu inside the API route C file. And after doing that, uh, we must add the following namespaces. So, as I told you, since we are using the user model to create a user by using the factory, we must add this namespace to our test file. And we are going also to add use carbon, carbon, and use carbon, carbon periods, carbon period. The reason as why we are adding carbon into our test file is that we are going to use the time function. Since we are going to, to, to use the time function to validate the validity of the meal, so we shall need to use carbon for that. So just go ahead and add these namespaces into your test file. And after that, uh, so As you are seeing the date, I am, I, I am calling carbon, and from carbon we are getting the date, right, the, the, date, the, 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 the date now. This one will also get the timestamp. We also get the timestamp alongside the date. So from there, you go ahead and implement the use refresh database trait inside our test class so just get that command and you put it just below the opening brace of your menu controller test and now as you are seeing we are creating our test with these fields date mail name details the price the menu validity and the image path so let us go ahead and run the test to see whether the test passes and automatically the test cannot pass for one reason. We have not implemented the 
menu controller, we have not implemented the, 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 the model for the menu. So let us just run the test to get some errors such that we can work upon the errors to make our test pass. So just run this command period bin period vendor bin php unit tests future http controllers and we are filtering to run only this test so when i hit enter automatically the test fails to pass let us see what causes the test to fail it is complaining that inside menu controller inside our controllers folder the menu controller does not exist so we must go ahead and create a controller called the menu controller so for that i have put all, all the all the commands you need in, into this file so but for that you shall just need to run this command let me first clear the terminal we shall say php artisan make a controller then you put the name of your controller so my controller is going to be the menu controller when we hit enter automatically you are seeing that that controller was created and coming back and coming back into the controllers you are seeing that we are having a new controller called the menu controller so so far we have added our test and we have also created the menu controller so let us first go back and commit to git so git add and we commit to git we shall say git commit minus m and we shall say added menu menu test controller and menu controller so let us commit those changes and after committing the project tree now is clean so let us follow along and see so i have put all the description and the procedures we make so this is the command we have just run so let us run the test again to see now after implementing the menu controller what is the result we are getting so let me run the test again and this time also the, the, the test fails this time the error has changed saying that the store function does not exist inside the menu controller so we must go ahead and create the store function inside the menu controller so i have already prepared that code for the store function and i have already tested it and put all the logic we might need so i'm going to explain that so the next step let's add the model so let's let's make a model before implementing the test no before implementing the before implementing the store function so just get this command php, php artisan make a model and we are going to call our model menu so let me clear the terminal so just run that command it is php artisan make model and the name of the model is going to be called menu so you hit enter automatically you are seeing that that model has been added so let us go into a folder for the models and as you are seeing git is tracking a model called menu has been created which implements the factory meaning that since the model is using the factory we must also go ahead and create the factory for the menu so let me first commit to git we shall say git add and, and say git commit and now i'm going to change the commit message to say added 
menu model. So after committing that to Git, after implementing this model, which is a menu, you are seeing it is using the factory, meaning that we must be having the menu factory. So if we come under databases, we come to the factories, you see we have only two factories, the menu factory and the user factory. So let us go ahead and make the menu factory. You just need to, you just need to run this command, php artisan make a factory and you put the name of your factory which is menu which is menu factory you hit enter automatically the menu factory has to be created and, and as you are seeing we are having the menu factory created so we are going to modify the return statement of this menu factory but before that let us just go and commit to git so we shall say git add and we shall say git commit minus m and our commit message we shall say added the menu factory added the menu factory we hit enter automatically now the project tree is clean so as you are seeing this is the this is the command i have just run for, to make the factory and I prepared this code for the return statement which fields we might need inside our factory and as you are seeing just go ahead and put this so we are, we are creating a factory with the fields date mirror name details price menu validity and image path and as you are seeing we are saying the date now and we are converting it to a string. And the mirror name we are going to create, we are giving it a value large, and the details will be, this is the, and we append a random number between one to three. We shall say, this is the, assuming this is the first, Let me append another string. This is the first meal of the day. I am assuming this is the first meal of the day. This is the second meal of the day. This is the third meal of the day, like that. And we are we are giving it a price to be a random value between two thousand five hundred and five thousand. And the menu, the menu validity, we are giving it. Let me take now. Or you can give it any. You can give it tomorrow or three days. But for this system, the administrator will be able <coughs> to add new mirrors on the menu each day. So as you shall see inside our store function, we are going to validate the menu validity to, to be 24 hours such that every meal added on the menu will be valid to the users or will be visible to the users for only 24 hours meaning that if the administrator puts a meal today on the menu the next day the, the administrator must put another meal on the menu such that the users can find a new updated menu and I am giving the image path a name which is image which is mirror photo dot I am appending a random number between 0 and 1 jpg let us append a random number between 0 and 10 so that is the code you are seeing uh, now after let's add the migration file so you, you, you shall say php artisan make a migration 
create menus so this is we are going to add a migration file to add a migration file which can be used to create our menus table inside the database so if we go inside the migrations folder you are seeing that we, we do not have any migration file to create the menus folder no, no, to create the menus table inside the database but before we do that let us first commit to git let us see the change we modified the menu factory so let us commit to git so we shall say git add with period then we shall commit git commit minus m and we shall say modified modified the menu factory so we commit and after committing now project tree is clean so if we come back let us just run our command php artisan make a migration create menus so if you hit enter automatically this must create a migration file inside the migrations director as you are seeing this has been created and we are going to create we are going to modify the schema to suit the fields for our menus table but before we do that let us first commit to git we shall say git add and we commit we say git commit minus m and now we shall say added menus migration file so after committing that to that we are going to modify this i have already prepared the blueprint for our schema so these are the fields we shall need inside our menus table so just get these fields and put them inside your schema so the first field will be the id and then the second field will be the date the third will be the menu underscore name details price menu validity and image path and the time stamps as well so after doing that you are seeing that git is tracking the changes and we have a change which has not been committed and that change we just modified the menus migration file so let us go ahead and commit to git so we shall say git add to the period then git commit minus m and we shall say modified modified the menu the menus migration file modify the create menus migration file and after committing to git let me go back and as you are seeing now the project tree is green so after modifying our migration now we are good to migrate such that we create a new table inside our database and that table will be called menus for now you are seeing we don't have any table called menus so just go ahead and run the command php artisan migrate you hit enter and automatically the migration was successful so coming back and refreshing our database you are seeing that we are we have created a new table inside the database called menus with these fields as we place them inside our migration file so all those steps are inside this document i will be providing it in the description such that you can follow and the next step we are going to implement the store function inside our menu controller 
So just go ahead and add these namespaces because we shall need them. So go back inside the menu controller. Inside the menu controller. So let us go back into our controllers. Inside the menu controller, we just add these namespaces. And as you are seeing, the namespace, the, the first namespace is mil. So we are adding, we are going to use the mil model. That's why we are adding the namespace for mil. And we shall use the user's model. That's why we are adding the namespace to the user model. And we are going to use the menu model. And we are going to be using the auth. And we shall need to validate our input. And we shall need to use the time because we are going to validate the menu validity. That's why we are importing or adding the namespace carbon because we are go going to get the date from the carbon. So after that, inside here we are going to implement what we call our constructor. So we are going to first create a user or declare our user and we create a constructor. So I have already prepared that code it is a simple code, protected user, and then a public function, constructor, and we are applying the middleware, of which our middleware is using a guard. So we must go ahead and also implement the guard. So after applying that, using this guard, we will throw an error if we never implemented the guard function. So this is the guard function. Just go ahead and also implement this guard function. So just below the closing brace of our class, just add that. And now here we are going to place what we call the store function. So we shall say public function store. And that one will take a request. And inside the body, of the store function we are going to validate so i am going to just implement this code and explain it i have already tested this code it is working 100 percent so just get this function public function store and i have put some logic which i'm going to explain so let us just get this and implement it. Uh, and as you are seeing, there is an error. So this character is not valid. Let us just change it. And in fact, Let me just update it inside this code. If I see where it was. Go for the price. Let me update that code. Here, this character is not valid. So that is the valid character. So let us just go ahead <coughs> and explain this code. But before that, let me first commit to git. So we shall say git add with a period, then git commit minus m, and we shall say modified the menu controller controller file 
by adding the store function so hit enter and automatically the project tree must be clean for now so let me explain this code <clears throat> as you are seeing we are saying public function is store and this one is taking a request so we are saying validator is equal to validator make all all the fields we pass here must be validated and we are saying mirror name is required and for this we shall only need the mirror name remember in the last tutorial we implemented what we called the mirror in the last tutorials we implemented the mirror controller which was saving a new mirror inside the database so let us first go inside our table the mirrors and as you are seeing we are having some meals we are having lunch we are having supper meaning that we store the lunch with its image or the avatar for the lunch meaning that if we need any details about lunch like the, the avatar for lunch we shall just get it inside the mirrors table no need to register a new avatar again because it is already existing so we shall get that, those details from the mirrors table and save them inside the menus table so that's why <coughs> we shall need the mirror name so we shall just get that and if the validator fails we are going to throw the exception in the form of json or what brought the failure and we are testing that if auth meaning that the user provided the user the email and the password we are getting the user type from the auth so from auth we are getting the user and from the user we are getting the user type and we are comparing it with this string admin so if the user type is equal to admin so we must go ahead and run this block of code this block of code errors if the user is not an administrator we must throw the json response or a message in the form of json saying that user do not have admin rights this resource is only ad is only allowed to admin users but let us assume that the user is an administrator we must continue to this block of code so we are saying menu details is equal to we are using the mirror model where mirror name is equal to request mirror name so we are getting whatever the user inputs as the mirror name and we are using it in a way a condition to search from the mirror table so we are getting the details of the mirror from the mirror table where the mirror name is equal to the mirror, is equal to the mirror the user inputs and we are getting the details of that mirror and storing them inside this variable we are doing the same we are saying get the price from a table called mirrors where the mirror name is equal to the mirror the user inputs and as you are seeing here this character is not valid just go ahead and change that character and now another thing we are also getting the image path from the mirrors table where the mirror name is equal to the to the mirror the user has provided so we are getting these three variables and you should put into you, sh you should note that this gate will return a collection so in order to access the details we must use this variable and we get the index of the field which is zero and again we get the details like that, like this i'm going to explain it below so after searching our mirrors table and getting these values now we are trying 
So we are using try and catch block and saying that if not menu details is empty or not pr menu price is empty, meaning that these fields are not empty. Meaning that we got some values from the database. Then we must go ahead. And we are saying, we are declaring a new variable called now, and we are get, using carbon, and we are getting the time or the date from the carbon facade. We are using carbon facade and now. So we are getting the date and storing it inside this. This will return the date with the timestamp, and now we are converting it to today. So for that, to convert it to the date, we shall just use the function to date string. And that one will convert it to date without the timestamp. And here we are saying moral, the variable moral is equal to carbon tomorrow. So now, as I told you that uh, you want the menu validity for today to, act to, to, to be valid for only 24 hours, meaning that if I define or add a meal on the menu today, by tomorrow the same time, those are 24 hours, that, me that, that menu must get expired. So that's why I'm getting tomorrow. So now I am saying tomorrow is equal to tomorrow dot to string. So I am converting the I'm converting whatever I get here, which is a timestamp, and I'm converting it to a data string, and I'm storing it inside the tomorrow variable. So now I am creating, or I am creating a new instance of the menu model, and I am saying menu date is equal to this date, this one here, mail name, is equal to request whatever the user inputs as the mirror name. And these values, these ones, they came from our database, from the mirrors table. Because we already have mirrors inside our table. So we are saying the details must be equal to the variable. This is the variable which is storing a collection from the mirrors table. And that collection is containing only one value, which is details. Because we only returned the details in the form of collection. So if you just access details minus accessing the index, you will get the value in the form of a collection. But I just need to get the actual details of the mail. So that is why I am using the index zero because in our collection, details is in the index of zero. And I am also getting the real the real data from the details field and I'm doing the same for the price and I'm defining menu validity is equal to tomorrow I explain this and also the image path I am using the same technique because remember this image path this variable here is storing a collection from the database so in order to get the real image path, I must use an array of the collection containing the image path and I get the real image path from the collection. And from there, I just save. So just change this to a valid character and now we are saving. And we are testing that if this variable result is true, we must return this response to the user. And the response we are returning, we are saying new menu details created successfully. Else, if results did not pass, we shall throw a message in the form of JSON saying that new menu creation failed. So that is the code. That is the code we are using to store or to create a new meal on the menu. 
And if our try block fails, the catch will be run. And we shall be catching the exception and returning it in the form of JSON to the user. So let us run the test again and see whether now the test will pass. So let us run the test again. Perfect, as you are seeing, now our test is passing. So now, the next step, since our test is passing, we have implemented the controller, we have added the model, and we have added the factory. And the next step we are going to take is that we are going to test whether we can submit or we can add a new meal on the menu via Postman. So let us just log in, go to the endpoint for login, HTTP. But to do this, you must make sure that your server is running. So let us go ahead and run the server by running PHP artisan serve. This starts our development server, and as you are seeing, the server is running on this port. This is the this is the port, and this is the address. So that is the address I am providing here, and I am hitting API auth login. So I am providing the email for the administrator and the password for the administrator, and I am submitting automatically. This endpoint is working. So we get a token from the user. We get a token for the user who is admin. And now the next step, let me duplicate this and add the endpoint, which is menu. So I'm going to add the menu. And for this, just for this, just come to the header okay we have an accept make sure you have accept as a key and the value is application stroke json then from that from that you come back to the body and under the body you come you come to row and provide your json remember in our validator for this we only needed mail underscore name and for the mirror name, I must use an existing mirror. For instance, lunch. So I will say lunch. That is the only field we need. And other fields, if we provide lunch, our code inside the store function will go and search for lunch in the mirrors table. And get the details it needs, like price, the image path, uh, created by the details, all the fields. So we only need to pass this. And if we hit send, it is saying unauthenticated. So I never provided the token. So you just go ahead and choose the bear token and provide the token from the login. And perfect, now you are seeing a new menu details created successfully. So we have been able to add a new meal on the menu. So let us go back into the menus table and see. Perfect, as you are seeing. We have been able to create this. That is it, and the menu validity you are seeing that the menu. You look at the date right now. The date right now is September thirtieth. But the menu validity September. The menu validity here is telling us October first, meaning that. Our code is working. The menu validity is 24 hours. Meaning that the menu, the mirror you add on the menu today, by tomorrow the same time, it must have expired. And the administrator will be able to add new mirrors each, 
each day that elapses. So that is it. And as you are seeing now, the price is 5,000. We never input the price. We never input the validity here. So we are just getting those details from the mills table. So that is a technique we have, we have used. We have used eloquent as you are seeing. Let me take you back here. We have used eloquent to search into our database and getting these and getting the, the fields we need, we store them into variables, but you cannot access the actual data inside this field because this get function will return that as a, as a collection. So to, to, for you to get the real data, you must use the index. You must use arrays. So you must use the index of that field. And the, after using the index, you get the actual data for the field from the database. So thanks for watching. This marks the end of tutorial number 16. And I am going to be providing you with all these codes in the description such that you can easily follow along to implement the codes. So let us meet in the next tutorial. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and comment.